Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once again, I'd like to welcome our viewing and our listening audience, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're broadcasting live here at uh, Christ Church, Southfield, Michigan. We're live streaming. It's on today, this Palm Sunday. It's the first time that I can remember, probably over 30 years, maybe close to 30 years, that I wasn't at a church on Palm Sunday with a congregation. As you know, we are dealing with this uh, coronavirus, and as a result of that, we have not assembled together as a congregation for over three weeks, and we're going to continue to do so until this virus has been subsided and is going to happen. But I'm not given a day for the week in which it is going to occur. I know God is faithful and that he will move and we will, we will get past this. So today I'm, I'm excited to be here to uh, bring a word and uh, I spent some time on this and my message today is entitled Grand Entry and this is dealing with the entry of Christ's triumphant entry, but I'm calling this the grand entry of Christ. With that being said, I like to open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are, for there is none like you. We, we thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. We ask for your mercy and your peace to be upon us. We ask for your protection. We ask for healing for the sick. We ask for peace for trouble. Yes, we ask that you would satisfy the needs of the afflicted. Lord, we pray unto you today that you would see us through. As you have been forever faithful, we trust in you to, to move on our behalf and that we may glorify you. We pray for the sick that's among us, and it's, and it's sick that's among us. We pray for the weak. We pray for those that are in recovery. We pray for the families of those who have, who have lost loved ones, for those who are dealing with this virus as we speak now. Lord, we ask that you would touch, move, comfort, strengthen, edify, and encourage. And Lord, I pray on today that the words that come from my lips are led of the Holy Spirit, that they glorify you and they edify the saints. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. The church says, Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. You know, it's amazing. I, uh, I've been talking to people in, a, in other states, you know, like in various places, and they say, Hey, are we be listening to you? And, and uh, it touches my heart that, you know, the men, of, the men of God, the deacons and stuff, got together and made this possible for me to broadcast these uh, messages to to throughout the world. And I, I just want to thank again the listening and viewing audiences. And also, i like to thank some of my buddies down in Georgia, uh, TJ and Sarah Williams and, and uh, Bernice and my cousins in South Carolina. He, he's a pastor of uh, Price. And I just want to thank uh, people throughout the country that's pulling together in prayer and uh, you know, stand in fellowship. Just because we don't uh, go inside the church walls does not mean we're not in fellowship. Amen? With that being said, i like to uh, dive into my text. And I told you my text is entitled, The Grand Entry. And it will be coming from the 19th chapter of the book of Luke. I want to read verses 28 through 40. So... Book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. It reads as follows. It says, When he had thus spoken, he went before ascending unto Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was coming nigh to Bethpage and Bethany, and that's about two miles away from Jerusalem, at the mount called Mount Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye unto the village over against you, in, the, in which 
at your entering you shall find a coat tied whereon yet never man sat. Loosen him and bring him hither. And if any man asks, Why do you lose why did you lose him? Thus shall say unto him, Because the Lord have need. And they were sent, went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosening the coat, the owner thereof said unto them, Why loosen the, the coat? And they said, The Lord have need of it. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and sat, and they set Jesus thereon. So they they got the coat. They brought it, they placed their garments on top of this coat, which was never been written before, and Jesus sat upon it. Verse 36 says, And when he had went, they spread their clothes in the way. Spreading your clothes in the way is a, is a great honor, and it's also a uh, deal with humility. What they are doing when they do that is they're allowing their clothes to be stamped, I mean, to be traveled over, to be stepped upon, uh, by the person who they're giving this honor to. It's, it's a humble thing. It's also like one of the highest forms of honor you can attribute to someone. It goes on to say, it says in verse number 37, And when he was coming nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for the almighty works that he had seen. For the works he has seen, saying, Blessed be the king that come in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. What has taken place here, Christ has finally revealed himself as the Messiah before he was kept under wraps. He would tell them, don't tell. But on this day, he is openly declaring himself as the Messiah. And what, what is the significance of this, uh, our, our king, of this donkey being involved in this? What, what will make him want to use a donkey. Uh, a donkey is used by a king in a time of peace. When it's a time of war, they would show up on horses. But since Christ came in peace and he is the prince of peace, he come riding in on a donkey. And they were allowed at this point to give him honor that's due to him. The other times he, he, uh, he avoided being made known by the masses. But on this day, he was willing to receive this honor openly before them. Now in the city of Jerusalem, where he traveled from, from Bethpage, which is about two miles south to travel to Jerusalem, he had to travel upward about two, two miles or so. And they said that in the attendance there's present, a historian said, it was approximately one to two million uh, people there attending him traveling on this donkey. One thing that was uh, a problem for the uh, children of Israel was they thought, the Jews thought, that Christ was coming to overthrow the Roman government, the, the Roman Empire, but he wasn't. So, you know, really they was looking for somebody to show up on a horse or a chariot or such, and here they see this king comes in riding on a donkey. Now, he was receiving honor and tribute from all the people, and the Pharisees, who was the religious leaders of the day, they were offended by it, and they told him to, to stop them from doing so. But he said, if I do, the stones will cry out. That's, that's, that's powerful, isn't it? What he was saying is, it's time for me to be glorified. It's time for me to receive the honors due to me. 
And, and the reason why it's such is that less than a week from this time, the same crowd that was hollering Hosanna, which means save us, and, and putting uh, palm branches out and waving them as a sign of victory and laying their garments before the Lord, the same crowd basically will be hollering crucify him by Thursday. Isn't it different a few days can make? The yeah. same crowd that was hollering Hosanna, blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord, are the same people that's going to holler, crucify him. But on today, we give thanks because Christ, he made his ways known. Here comes the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's revealing himself as the Messiah. No longer will he keep his purpose hidden. This day in which the Lord Jesus Christ will receive the honor that's due him. The people came out by the thousands. I told you some of the stories you say was up to from one to two million people in attendance. Oh, what a day. This day Christ received the greatest honor before his crucifixion. Never before was he honored in such a way. So what I'm telling you is this here. All the days when Christ was on the earth from his birth until his death, being crucified on the cross, he has never been honored as such as this day. This day gave him the highest tribute before his crucifixion. The people spread their garments in his path, and I told you that's, that's a great honor to do so. And... They came with an expectation, and some of them had a false expectation, as I said. Some of them believed that Christ was going to overthrow the Roman government, and this didn't happen. The Pharisees, I told you, were the religious leaders of the day. They were offended. Isn't it, isn't it common to, to know people are offended when you give God honor? And... And oftentimes, they, they want you to cease or desist from doing so because they're offended or they tell you there's more than one way unto heaven or one way to, to be about God's business. But I'm here to tell you today, there was only one person riding on that donkey, and his name is Jesus the Christ. There's only one way to the Father, and there's only one mediator between God the Father and man, and it's Jesus the Christ. So he was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of the cross, for the shedding of his blood, for without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin. So Christ went on this holy week, he rides in on the first day, the Sunday, he rides in and rides out. No signs and wonders, no no miracles, no no uh, recovering of sight to the blind, no no person healed from any sickness or disease. He rides in and rides out. Then he goes to the temple and he cleansed the temple again because they were in there selling and buying and stuff. So he said it, the, the the temple is the house of prayer. So he cleared the temple. So from the time he rode in. Until Friday, he was crucified. Thursday, they held that his last supper. Remember the last supper, Lord, that was held the day before. Friday, they had this fake court, convicted him without following the rules. Because in order to be convicted where you can be put to death, you had to have more than two, two or more witnesses. And they didn't really have no witnesses, so he was crucified. By his own people, the Romans had the authority over the Jews, so the Jews were not permitted to put someone to death. That's why they had to take him to Pontius Pilate uh, in order to put him to death. That being said, there's a few things I wanted to touch on before I went into some other things I wanted to put before you. I think of all the things that the Lord has done for his people, as far as restoring sight to the blind. Your audience said you got to talk up. 
I'm talking about my Welcome normal. Louder. Yeah, it's, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the things I, I said is that all the things that the Lord has done, the, the people seem to forget. The Lord had restored sight to the blind, and in the Old Testament, that hadn't occurred before. He had fed a multitude of thousands. He had raised the, the dead. He had calmed the sea and the winds, and uh, he had fed that multitude of 5,000, and he had walked the waters, just to name a few, you know, as casting out demons. That same audience that was present when he rode in hollering, Hosanna, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord, was the same people who hollered crucify him. And some of those people that were in that crowd were some of those same people that he healed, that he restored, that he f had forgiven. But what happened was this, the Pharisees, and we have modern day Pharisees now, that the religious leaders of the day, they needed their attention for themselves. They wanted to be looked upon as being the religious leader, the, the right way to go. But they were the wrong way to go because they didn't recognize that Jesus the Christ had come. And so they didn't want him to get this attention because they said, you are not the Christ. You're not the Messiah. You're, you're not God. So you shouldn't get treated as such. You shouldn't get treated as a king. And some people now tell us we're foolish for serving the Lord. We're foolish for worshiping the Lord. We're foolish for even doing this broadcast right now in a time such as this. What would be foolish would be not to broadcast, would be not to get the word of, of the Lord out, would be not to let you know there's hope, there's a God that we serve that's more than enough, and he can do more than enough. And this problem that we're faced with now, this affliction that we're faced with now, that same king that rode in on that horse, that restored sight to the blind, that made the wind and the sea obey him, is the same king that we serve today. And I'm here to tell you that whatever we face with, this, whatever's before us, is temporary. And that our God is faithful and just all that he say and do. He is the real king. He is the only true king. And he will never leave nor forsake us. The Lord made it known who he is to them on that day. But he also made it known unto us who he is and what he's done and what he will do. It's still a great lack with the people of this world, even on today. In honoring and loving him. The time is now to give him this glory that's due to him. We must not allow our afflictions or our suffering to prevent us from bringing God glory, for that's the purpose that we are made. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to trust. I don't want you to cry. I want you to give him praise. You have not been forsaken or abandoned. The Lord is forever faithful. He is not like a, a thermometer. And I'm, I'm, the reason why I jumped to this is this. Because the thermometer goes up and down as the temperature goes up and down. And some people, when a lot of things going on, their emotions are like way up here. And then when it die down, they down here. But we don't need to be like that because it can run us crazy. But the Lord is like a thermostat. He's anchored. He's set. Just like, for instance, I'm in a room now, and if, uh, if, if the thermostat is set in this room, that's what the temperature is going to be. When you anchored in the Lord, when you set in the Lord, you don't let all the things around you consume you where you're going to chase after things that, and they're going to emotionally drain you. You know, you're up this way one day and you're down this way the next. And a lot of times that comes from being more emotional than having faith. If you have enough faith, and, and, I, and I pray that you do, and if you don't, I pray that the Lord will grant you the type of faith you need to get through a thing such as this. To be anchored in the Lord means I trust him enough. 
I'm not going to be moved by what's around me. It doesn't make me think that he's not faithful. It doesn't make me think that he has forsaken me. That's what it's saying. I trust him enough to believe he can get me through this. Now, I, I would like to know how many of my viewing audience, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, actually believe that the Lord is going to see us through this. I'm, I'm here. You can, you, you can write this down if you want to. I'm not giving you no exact date. But as sure as the sun rises in the east and set in the west, the Lord will not let this be the end. Amen. It will not be the end. Amen. The Bible speaks and tells us what, what the tribulation period is, what's going to happen in the, in the last days, and how the church will be raptured out, and how those, those seven seals will be broken, and the seven trump, trumpets and the seven uh, vials will be poured out. And what we in now is neither of uh, any of them. So I don't want you to confuse this and think we're going through the tribulation period now because it's not. Christ made known to the people that he is the Messiah. And he rode in on a donkey representing peace. And that's one of the names, many names of Christ has. And one is the Prince of Peace. For he is the Prince of Peace. And so I want you to, to trust him even in times such as this, as we approach uh, Good Friday, that's our, our, next, our next thing is Good Friday. That's the day in which Christ died. And, but after that, surely after Good Friday, three days, three nights, we have a resur Resurrection Sunday. Amen. A Resurrection Sunday is when they ran to the tomb and found it to be empty. That Christ that they crucified, he's alive. He's alive forevermore. This is the beginning of that, that Passion Week. He come in as the Passover lamb. And the Passover lamb is crucified on a Friday. And it's a certain time period in the window in which that Passover lamb must be crucified or, you know, put to death. And that's the time, the same time that Christ was put to death. Just like in Egypt, when the children of God were delivered from the hand of Pharaoh. They were told to take the blood of the lamb and put it over their door, doorpost and go in their house and the deaf angel would pass them by. So those who trusted God and did such, the deaf angel passed them by. But everyone didn't go in the house because there was some that didn't believe. And those who didn't, they didn't make it. I'm saying this to say this. If you don't believe, you won't make it. So it's important for you to believe. And there's one thing I want to clear up, because I, I heard some people say that some Christian people, church-going people, are mean and they don't care for people unless they believe what they believe. I don't know which group of people you've been dealing with, but we don't believe that. And the Bible doesn't teach that for us. The Bible teaches us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So is whether you believe or not, it doesn't it doesn't affect me caring for you. The Bible speaks about agape love or like a fatherly love, and that's given without any expectation of love giving back, you know, being returned. That's how we talk. We talk to to hate sin, but to love man. We hate sin, we love man. And Jesus was a loving person. He, he was loving even to those people who mistreated him. And as he was being crucified on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That don't sound like a mean person to us, to me. A person who, who showed love and kindness, a person that went to the sick and the needy and the blind and the, and the outcasts and he healed them and he forgave our sins. He forgave my sins. And just as he forgiven my sins, he can forgive yours as well. But we need to cry out right now. We in a we in a tough hour. But our God is bigger than our problems. He's bigger than our circumstances and our right. situations. Right. He's greater. 
he is the king. He is the one that was spoken of. And even here in the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 9, I want you to turn your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 9 real quick. I wanted to uh, get a few verses and I want to take some time just to talk to you and to encourage you uh, during this, during this uh, difficult time. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. I've been trying to train myself, and I, I guess I've been doing okay with, you know, not trying to touch my face every blue moon I do, but I want to let you know, my listener, my uh, listening viewing audience, is that we got gloves, we have masks, we have sanitizers, we have disinfectant. And we use those things to, you know, pretty wisely. We, we wipe down anything we touch, you know, door handles, stuff. We we way past the six for a rule because there's only a, a cameraman and so and so and uh, three other deacons uh, and the minister. And that's it. And we in a room where we spaced out and we don't let the uh, congregation meet. And some of them are, you know, it bothers them. It bothers me too, but it's what we got to do for now. And so, with that being said, let me get back to my text. I want to go to Zechariah nine and nine, and it says this: Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion! Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just having salvation, lonely and riding on an ass upon a coat, the foal of an ass. That was prophesied approximately 500 years, I think, before Christ showed up. Isn't that special? Amen. Let me show you something else since we, since we go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. Isaiah 61, I want to read, this is, I'm going to read down to verse number 2. Read to verse number 2. It says this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach, to uh, preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to proclaim liberty to uh, no, proclaiming liberty, I'm sorry, to the captives and the opening of the prisoners to them that are bound, to reclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. From there, I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 4. That's where we began. We was in 4 and 19, but we, I mean, we was in the 19th chapter. Now we're going to go to 4 chapter of Luke, and I want to go to... Verse number 18. So we want to go to Luke 4 and 18. And it reads as follows. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the ministers and sat down. And all the eyes of them were in the synagogue were fastened unto him, referring to Christ. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. What he was telling them was, I'm the Messiah and I'm here. What you was waiting for in the book of Isaiah some approximately 800 years for that Messiah to come, it is I. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He made it known to them in the temple that he is the Messiah. And what's also unique about him being in the temple, if Christ was born out of wedlock without having a father, 
a child born out of wedlock would not be allowed to teach Deuteronomy 23 into the temple. He, he wouldn't be permitted to go. Christ had an earthly father, and his name was Joseph. He had to be of the tribe of Judah because Christ had to be born of the tribe of Judah. And what's, what's interesting about that, Joseph and Mary were both born of the tribe of Judah. So Christ is here. He shows up. He make it known to them. He make it known in the temple. And then he make it known among the masses. And he's still making himself known unto us through his word. And the Father still draws. God is still drawing people unto salvation. He's still healing. He's still forgiving sin. And he's still giving out everlasting life. The Bible says, come unto me, you that have me laid the burden, I shall give you rest. Come. That's what, that's what this broadcast is about. It's about sharing the love of God, reaching out to the lost, making disciples. That's what it's about. It's not about hate. It's not about discontent. It's not about some political party or nothing because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. All of us. Mm -hmm. Me, you, <laughs> the whole world has sinned against God. And, you know, usually when, when we are faced with difficult times, it, it causes us to, to look and see just how fragile life truly is. And it also should cause you to seek God. Because he is, he is the way out of this. You know, I hear a lot of things uh, going on, on on the television about uh, this uh, a coronavirus that there's no uh, vaccination for it yet. Uh, you know, I hear about... Or if you stay in the house, just one of the ways. But I don't hear them saying, stay in the house and pray. I, I, don't, I don't hear the news saying, we need to seek God. We need to humble. We need to confess ourselves before the Lord and ask them to heal the land. I, I don't hear the news reporters saying that. And if they think that our deliverance is based upon what man to do, we truly are in trouble. But since we believe that God is bigger than that, things that man are faced with. And he's a God that has no beginning or end. He's not a created being. All things were made by him. We trust him to, to, to fix, to heal, to restore, to edify. And even if we have to leave this earth, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He said, where I am that you may be also. He said, in his father's house there are many mansions or many rooms. God loves us, loves us enough to where he refused to let us go. And that's what's good to know. And so with that being said, if you haven't confessed the Lord as your Savior, and this, this is heart-driven, I would ask that you would do so now. And also, you know what else? If, if you desire a church home, you know, we, we, we still be a part of this. You can be a part of this family. Amen. You know, we, we have a Facebook page. We have a, uh, a website. And we have numbers. You can actually talk to people. It's not a bunch of robots and stuff. You get to talk to us, you know, and you get to be able to get nurtured and cared for. So that that's available, too. With that being said, I wanted to touch on this uh, this uh, virus a little. And I want you to, to uh, try to... Make every effort, if you can, to follow these instructions. Okay? Amen. Now, for those of you who are not aware, we are, we are uh, here in Southfield, Michigan, at 23795 Civic Center Drive. That's a metropolitan area of Detroit. And so we're going to cover... Uh, the area of Wayne County and Oakland County for the most part because we're in Oakland County and Detroit is like two miles or so from us 
and that's Wayne County. But we wanted to uh, make you aware of what's going on in those areas, you know, within those in the city and the state of Michigan. And in the state of Michigan, we are looking at 14,255 cases. And out of those 14,255 cases, it's resulted in 540 deaths. Active cases are 13,680. And uh, total tested, 37,992 thus far. So this is a serious concern. And it's, it's also important for you, if you have gloves, wear them. If you have a mask, if you're out in public, I'm recommended to wear them. My, my doctor told me that that's what he recommended us to do. And also to have some type of disinfectant where you can touch and wipe and clean stuff off that your hands touch. And also I was told that it's important to make sure you change your clothes when you get home and to take your shoes and leave them at the door because when you track in the house, you bring all what's on your shoes, go home with you. Mm -hmm. So when you come in the house, start leaving them at the door, you got some uh, disinfectant sprayer, hit the soles of those shoes or something, you know, and spray on there and be mindful of that as well. Door handles, switches, anything you touch, like you get money and change from stores, wear gloves when you go into stores to touch things and to, to, uh, to, you know, to purchase things, you wear some gloves. And if you don't have some, I don't, I don't particularly know what areas everybody in is listing, but we trying to reach out to, to our, our uh, seniors and the people in need within our community. So we, we, we're distributing water and food, if they need gloves and masks, and we have them, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we provide that as well. But one thing that we, we do when we have to go take care of, like some of our seniors that's not able to get around and stuff, we don't go in shaking hands and hugging and all that. We drop that stuff off at the door. We, we let them know we're coming. They be at the door. We put that food right there. They get it, and we make sure they're in, and we leave. And we go to the, to the next person, and we, we disinfect in between and spray down and make sure that, you know, we're not transporting no, uh, no uh, viruses or, or such. And so with, with that being said, I want to get back on the part about the Lord and being in fellowship. This is a golden opportunity for you to be studying, studying your Bible. And if you can, you can do stuff with conference call and share other stuff with other believers where you want to have more than one, or you can do uh, video conferences. And, you know, you can text people. You can email. We want to take advantage of this time. Just because you have made it where we can't assemble, you know, like 10 or more or so, it doesn't mean we can't study, and it doesn't mean that we can't be communicating with one another. Also, <clears throat> I, I've been asked to do uh, some funerals of people who died from the virus. One, one funeral home refused to allow us to have a regular service. They said they only will allow viewing. And I believe that's maybe going to be the trend, it looked like, because some other ones told us that as well. And so that's, that might be tough for, you know, you got a loved one that passed and you weren't able to have a service for them. But one thing that I'm going to recommend to you is to do this. If you, you, you meet with your immediate family because they only allow you a certain amount of people to be present, you have a regular service. They bury them later on and just have a memorial service at the church. When the church is open back up, have a memorial service for, for your loved one. If, if you go to a church and, and they refuse to do that, I would, I would have some issues with that. So... You know, it's about having the time, the dates, and the schedule to do so. But once this clear up, that's what direction that we want to uh, go in. Is there any questions, Deacons? 
Okay. Jesus Christ is Lord. And he's Lord forever. He showed up riding on a donkey. A donkey represent peace for a king to show up on. The people were allowed to give him his honor. It's the highest honor that he received while he was on this earth before he was crucified. That same Jesus that rode in on that donkey is the same Jesus that saves on today. So I appeal unto you with my whole heart that you will come to fellowship with the Lord, that he will draw you in, that you will receive him, that you will be restored and make whole. This thing that's before us is only temporary, but the loss of a soul is forever. Draw nigh to him, and he'll draw nigh to you. Amen. Be of good cheer and be encouraged. And also, this is what I want to say about my congregation here at Christ Church. We have some people that's in the hospital right now dealing with the sickness. I want all of us to be mindful to keep them up in prayer. My listening audience, that you will pray for us and pray for me uh, during this time because we, we still want to be effective at doing what the Lord called us to do. And we also want to honor, you know, what the state laws are and in regard to how we are to, you know, to travel and, and do this and that and the other. And so I encourage you to do so as well. And I, I want you to spend more time with your family on the phone if you can or email, whatever. But I, I need you to share some gospel with somebody. And I make it a point to do this. I check my phone. I have, I believe, 800 and... 48 or 58 some contacts on my phone so I say I want to make it a purpose to call at least 20 to 40 people every day so I've been on a trail the deacons here at my church are giving a list of people they need to call and check on at least twice a week that's what we practice in here and if we need to drop some off whatever it may be we can assist and we'll do so problem that we have and it's tough for us is that we, when we have some person in a hospital, we're not able to see them. And sometimes we're not even able to communicate with them even on the phone. And that's tough on the families. And so I want you to be praying for the families that's dealing with that. We have loved ones in the hospital and they're not able to visit and stuff. It's tough. And, and don't just pray for here. Just pray for around the world because this is a problem. It's, it's global. And uh, Lack of salvation is global. It's people that don't believe. The largest population on the earth is the Chinese. And for the most part, most Chinese are not Christians. And the next populated area is, is uh, India. And a lot of them are not Christians. And then it's the United States. So China and India have over a billion people. Each one of those countries have over a billion people. The United States have... 300 and around 30 million uh, citizens and um, Canada is one of our neighbors. They only have like 31 million for the whole country. But we want to pray for all of our, our brothers and sisters and, and uh, for the sickness to be overcome and that we more concerned about loving and caring for one another than chasing after money. Amen. 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 So with that being said, and no more questions, uh, once again, I have to give you all this because uh, we still have stuff we have to take care of here. So some people be asking me about what do they give their offerings and things like that. On our website, it's ChristChurchMI.org. It's electronic giving on there. You click on that website, you go look across the top, you see it. It's posted. You can click on that and you can use uh, your card to give. Also, you can mail stuff in to, to here uh, to 23795 Civic Center Drive. Once again, 23795 Civic Center Drive, Southfield, Michigan. The zip code is 48033. Some people just were just walking past or they come up here, they just want to drop off their uh, offering, you know, 
we still we still take them like that. Mm. But uh, but it's it's important that we have enough to run stuff, and we 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 doing I guess we doing okay for right now. But we don't know how long this is gonna last. Mm. And one thing for sure is we want to keep uh, keep this uh, uh, live stream going. We want to be able to reach out to the loss, and we want to reach out to. Uh, to, to nourish those who are believers, to let them know God is faithful and he's not slack. And also, we want to be active in our Bibles. And I, I talked to uh, uh, the church Wednesday about being active in the Gospel of John. And I, I began uh, doing a study on John, and I'm going to continue to be in John this Wednesday as well. So for those of you who just want to need something to do in the Bible, begin uh, with the Gospel of John. Amen. And we're going to go from there. I love you. I thank you for listening and tuning in. We're, we're tweaking our sound and making sure we get this stuff together. And pretty soon, if, it's, if not right now, we will have it right to where it, the sound is crystal clear. I love you. I, I, thank, you. I thank you for being here. I pray for the leaders and the other congregations, some of our are struggling, not doing so well, some are behind and some things, but pray for your leaders and the other uh, believers in Christ and that we will glorify God in this and there be no division amongst us. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I thank you.